Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, we're here at Waggy Knives. We're going to talk to Travis Waggy, owner and proprietor of this custom knife shop, and he's going to sharpen some of my super dull knives, show you how to do that, show you how knives are constructed. I'm really excited because knives are a super important part of cooking. That's true. We make custom chef knives, santoku, boning knives, slicers, petty pairing, and even a little bit of a hunting style knives here um, in Central Texas. So we also rehandle vintage knives, but mostly our bread and butter is making extremely custom knives. Any type of knife that you can dream up with any type of materials, we can do it. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you make these knives and then we can get to sharpening my terrible knives and show people how to sharpen their knives at home. Sounds great. Awesome. So the first thing we do is talk about the type of knife they'd like. And this one is the most traditional. This is a German shape. The knife typically does three things. There are knives that pierce like a dagger. There are knives that slice like a boning knife. And there are knives that chop like an ax. The reason the chef knife is so popular because it does all three really well. Uh -huh. um, this would be a French style knife. Okay. You can see the difference. It's more shaped like a TP and this one's more shaped like a, an igloo. So we decide what type of knife they'd like. We start taking hand measurements. Everyone's hand is different. We also do clay molds of the individual's hand if they want it especially made for them. Um, then we talk about weight. Then we start talking about the handle material. They can choose the different types of steel. We have handmade pins that um, they can choose to go with their wood. And then we also can do a liner, which gives contrast and uh, makes the knife give it a little bit of a, a bounce. Once somebody decides on their knife, we hand draw their knife on this piece of steel. We don't use patterns. No knife is the, ever the same. So when we have scraps left over from knives, we make tiny little choppers. Or we make deer skinners. Wow. Or we make pretty little box openers. This would be a really dangerous stocking stuffer. Like right? put it in there, blade up, and like some kid reaches their hand in. <laughs> they would hate Santa forever. <laughs> Once we have the knife nice shape, we actually will put it on the grinder. Then once we've got the shape and we've got the nice bevel, then we actually will put it in the kiln and then we'll start to cook it. They um, are flattened, we put them on the testing machine to make sure they're at the optimal hardness, and then they go move to the handle phase. So I let people choose which wood they like, and we usually keep about 50 different types of, of woods and materials, but this is kind of a, the prettiest stuff that we've got right now. We've actually been making handle material, oh. and this is just a bunch of cloth um, mixed with um, epoxy as well. How cool! So you can do your grandmother's quilt, you can do your... Wife's sexy panties. That's right. Or I even saw somebody actually cut up a Game of Thrones book and made a knife with actual paper from the Game of Thrones book, which I wow. thought, okay, somebody's going to next make a Fifty Shades of Grey knife. With like a dildo on the other end. <laughs> um. <laughs> So you can basically put anything in a knife handle. Wow. You'll tape it on there, drill the holes, then you'll come back, put the other one on there, drill through this end, then put the pins in, then glue it, then let it sit overnight, then you can actually start to work it. Then, eventually, as you grind the handle to the, the form that you want, it'll come out looking like this, nice and shiny. I think people typically will use maybe three knives. A lot of people buy the blocks that have 15 knives. Um, we don't really believe in that. We use um, three knives in our home. We use a large chef knife, something like this. And then we use a paring knife. And then, um, well, just is more of a utility, but slash paring knife. And um, sometimes a, a santoku shape. If we want to do a lot of chopping, we're making a stew or something like that, and we need to really chop quickly, so. Let's talk about how to care for a knife at home. I brought some of my embarrassingly dull knives. Well, let's look so at them, show me how see if we can sharpen them. them. Okay. We use a series of whetstones. I think the safest way yeah. for a beginner is simply to push the knife away from you. We use about a 15 degree, which um, is about the size of a matchbook, and uh -huh. just go along the edge. And the way I do it is I do five, five, well, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Just to keep it even? To keep it even, you need to do the exact amount on, it, on each side. After you have it nice and sharp, you can actually use a hone, which is a, is a steel. Mm -hmm. And you can simply keep your edge um, honed with uh, a steel. And, yeah. and 
really practicing this, you'll be able to sharpen your knives in about five minutes if you just do it a couple of times. The real test is to hang it so it's free. And if it can cut through that, you know, you've got something, so stand somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! And then you really want to try to build this. All right. I haven't done this in a long time. It better be good. I know, right? <sighs> well, you made a big dent. I know, right? Two swings, not so bad. Wow! But a waggy knife would do it in one swing. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> like, what's the worst thing you can do to a knife at home? Like, glass cutting boards are Glass terrible. cutting boards are terrible. Um, opening up Amazon boxes, um, using it as a screwdriver. Oh, God. Um, getting your ice maker unfrozen, <laughs> you know, using it as a nice pick. Using it as it's not intended. Yeah. Also throwing it in a drawer with a bunch of other knives, mm -hmm. um, leaving it in a sink full of water, putting it in the dishwasher. Even a middle grade knife shouldn't be put in the dishwasher. Yeah. And of course, once a year, if you bring your knife to a professional knife sharpener, um, there's people at the flea market who do it. There's people at the farmer's, farmer's market markets. Here, yeah. yeah. I'll be at the farmer's market um, in Sunset Valley here, starting at the end of April and um, we'll be selling knives oh, and awesome. um, sharpening knives. We've been started making these cool little oh, cool. made of mahogany. Nice, well, I love that. And I'll give you one as a parting gift and you can tell oh. me how it works. Oh my gosh, yay, thank you. No problem. Yay, well thank you so much, Travis. That was very fun and educational and got my knives sharpened and my handmade spatula. Well, it's great to have you guys here. Thank you so much. And if, I will put a link below to Waggy Knives if anyone's interested in getting a custom knife. Or to have their knives sharpened or have their knives repaired, restore a family heirloom, whatever it might be, anything knives. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time. Bye. <gasps> what I've always dreamed about when I die, being cremated and having my ashes mixed into clay and turned into a bowl, and that bowl is cursed, and whoever breaks it will be cursed. But I could put it into a knife handle, and then it's not breakable, and then I don't have to have a curse involved. It could be a cursed knife. That's true. It could be a murderous weapon. Oh, cool. Like, it has a mind of its own. Right. Anyone who uses it ends up getting killed with that knife. Oh, accidentally, like, chop, yeah. chop, chop.